Hello, in this video let's go over uh, something called consumer choice theory and consumer choice theory is one of the more challenging topics in, in microeconomics. Uh, students um, generally benefit from multiple explanations of this so mm -hmm. I uh, recommend reading chapter 6 uh, and appendix B if you're into the more mathematical uh, explanations for what's going on are also helpful. Okay. So uh, why do we care about this? Well, it explains consumer demand. And, and I've uh, made this point to you hopefully before. Um, understanding consumer demand will help you to sell more goods and services and make more money. Right? If you understand what the consumer's up to, you can um, better meet their needs and then make more profit for whatever your endeavor is. On the demand side, uh, understanding this can also help you to become a better consumer. Okay? Kind of think through some of your consumption choices. Okay. So what it really does in, in economics, it gives us a, a, an explanation of really where we got this demand curve. Like where did we get the fact that the price is four and then the, these consumers will buy five of these units. Right? Where did that come from? And as the price changes, uh, we know about the elasticity now, but like why does the quantity uh, change in that respect? Okay. So let's say Warren Buffett offered to buy you one, one good it has to be a physical good, not a service, and it can't be a financial asset. Okay, he'll buy you anything. He wants to make you happy. He's a nice guy, apparently, and um, whatever that product is. So think about what that might be. For a lot of students, it's a house. Okay, so the but it might not be right. Well, whatever that whatever that is for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna just use an example of if it's a house. And let's say it's a very good house, and we'll say it's like seven million dollars right so the seven million dollar house whatever yours is you can apply that to, uh, to this okay now Warren Buffett is a pretty busy guy so let's say he doesn't want to go shopping he doesn't want to uh, sit through the closing costs and, and all that time if you've bought a house before it's you know not a not a quick process so uh, let's say he's just gonna give you the cash would you still buy that one good for a lot of people a lot of consumers, they would not still buy the one good. They would buy multiple goods. And the reason for this is because of something called diminishing marginal returns. Okay, the, the additional happiness that I get from that owning that house uh, is, is good. I will, I will uh, enjoy it, but eventually my additional happiness is, is going to decrease. Right? And I'd probably like to have a basket of goods um, rather than just the one the one product. Okay, and so maybe you would buy one thing, but for a lot of consumers, they're going to buy a multitude of things. Okay, and what this is called, this is that that amount of money that you have from Warren Buffett is called a budget constraint. Okay, so if in in my example, it's going to be seven million dollars. Okay, so um, and, and you already do this as a consumer, right? You go to the uh, store or you shop online, and you have a certain amount of money that you're willing to spend. And that is your budget constraint, right? You don't want to go beyond that. Sometimes you can't go beyond that. Sometimes you could borrow uh, beyond it, but then that just becomes part of your future future consumption. Uh, so that's that's what the concept of budget constraint, just whatever you have. Okay, and we've seen this before. Oops. Um, oops. Sorry. Uh, we've seen this before. It's the concept of consumer surplus, right? The difference between the the budget or your reservation price, what you're willing to pay, and what you actually pay is, is called consumer surplus, right? So, um, economists on this, when we when we do this topic, we, we call these types of problems utility maximization problems. And if you really think about it, what consumers are really doing is trying to make themselves happy, right? You go to the store, you, you buy something. If it's useful, you'll buy it. If it's not useful, you won't buy it. Um, and so this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the most utility out of our purchases given some kind of budget constraint. Okay, Utility, again, is a term we use for usefulness or happiness. Okay, A great example of this is on Black Friday. Right, on Black Friday, people try to um, maximize their utility. They try to get as much product as they can. And they know the prices are, are cheaper, so they fill up the stores. Uh, not everybody does this, but a lot of people do this, and they're trying to um, maximize the the utility of the gifts that they want to buy or the uh, products that they want to buy for themselves. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let me load up this guy here. I've sort of drawn a 
straight line here. So I've got this uh, budget constraint, right? So remember that's uh, seven million. Okay. And I could spend it on, in my example, I could spend it on housing. Okay, so I could buy, um, you know, seven million dollars worth of housing, or I could buy it on other goods, right? And so those other goods you can think of as, you know, just a basket of other goods. Or in in my case, I'm gonna I'm gonna use food. Okay. And so we've seen a version of this. This is a like a consumption frontier. It really just shows us the budget constraint. So um, I could spend my whole uh, seven million on housing, right? So I could do that. But we've already said that a lot of people they're not going to spend their whole seven million on on uh, housing. Now I could also spend seven million on food. Right, product products that I that I want to eat. Right, and so I could get you know incredible dinners. I could eat everything that I've ever wanted to eat. Uh, it would be great. For most people, they're gonna they're gonna choose some level of of uh, both. Right, so there's a three and a half million here, and a three and a half million. We've already kind of gone over the the trade off, but this the budget constraint for this. Now I'm gonna cheat here. I didn't. Well, no, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to cheat. I'm just going to draw the line better. How about that? There. Let's see if I can even erase it. Okay. So this is this budget constraint. Okay. You could spend uh, half. You could spend 75% on housing. Uh, you could spend more on food. Okay. And when we think through what what kinds of people might do this um, you could buy lots and lots of house and you could buy lots and lots of food and we we think we know people who have a very nice house but never uh, sort of eat out or they don't eat fancy food right and so they're um, they have that basket of goods that makes them happy right and then we also know people that like to eat out a lot and they um, may not have as nice of a house, right? For a lot of people, they, they like, uh, you know, reasonable housing and reasonable food, right? So they like this, this in between. here. And so what economists notice, let's see if I can get the, the red here, a pink, that works. Okay, so I could do both, right? So we'll, uh, we'll put a line like right here. We'll put a, put a spot right here, right? So this is half and half, right? Now, in order to get more housing, what do I have to do? I have to get rid of some of the food, or I have to give up some of that food. And if I want to get more housing, I have to get rid of some more food. Okay? And eventually, though, uh, these points, these happiness levels, uh, I'm going to have to get like a lot more house to give up in the food. Okay? So I end up with something like this. And then down here, if I want to get more food, I have to give up house, right? So in order to move this way, I have to start decreasing the amount of housing that I consume or that I pay for. So we're going to have, let's do that a little straighter here. I don't know why I'm doing that. There we go. Okay, and so we end up with this curve here. And so we call this an indifference curve. And an indifference curve is a basket of happiness between two uh, goods or two types of goods in this case uh, where I'm equally happy to consume any of those combinations right so I'm equally happy with something up here and I'm equally happy with something over here okay now the problem is I can't afford this right because this is seven million dollars on food and you know like two million dollars on housing and over here I can't afford uh, eight million dollars on housing period because I only have seven million dollars anyway right so um, anywhere along this line though I'm, I am equally happy I'm, I'm equally happy to give up um, you know food for housing so that's what that's that's what's going on here okay and that's called an indifference curve so there are some rules that go with indifference curves okay and um, that there are lots of them okay so Let's see here. Let me come back to this. Okay, there's there's also a, a set down here. Okay, indifference curve down here. There's an indifference curve right here, 
there's an indifference curve right here. And you might be sitting there saying, well, you know, I don't have a trade-off between food and housing. Um, you know, my, my trade-off would be, would look, uh, have, look differently. Well, and that's fine because every consumer is different. Uh, what marketers often do is they put baskets of consumers together and try to figure out what's going on. But there's, we've mapped out all of these different indifference curves. And, and so one of the rules here is the indifference curves that are away from the zero, more consumption is happier, right? Is better, more utility. So I get happier the more um, goods and combinations of goods that I get. And I'll get, in other words, I'll get out to this, to these new indifference curves, okay? And the only way to do that is to push your budget out, okay? And so in your, in your life, you can probably think a time when you've uh, experienced an increase in income and an increase in budget, and you're able to buy more goods and services, right? You've made yourself happier. So that's, that's kind of what's going on there, right? We have this model to, to explain all that, okay? So, so that's, uh, that's what's going on there. And we can't buy everything because that's beyond our budget constraint. We're always, we're always there. And then there is some complication because the preferences will, will change up. Okay. Um, and this is all another explanation of the scarcity concept from the first week. Okay. So here are the rules from, uh, for indifference curves, um, based on the fact that we, we make these choices, the higher, the better. They're always downward sloping because I will substitute you know this good for this good or if I sub if I want to consume more of this good I have to substitute this good okay uh, they'll never cross because it's just a new indifference curve out there somewhere and the, the explanation on why they're bowed in uh, something called the marginal rate of substitution okay and so um, we enjoy products a little bit less the more that we get of them so marginally right so it's diminishing marginal returns again okay things that can change our budget are going to be um, income okay or, or changing changing the way that the consumers are spending and then things that will change the difference curve are going to be the preferences so different uh, things that people prefer different combinations of things okay the, the, the good food the food types that I enjoyed when I was 18 or was willing to buy are very different now uh, than what I had, so what I had back then. So preferences will change too. Okay. Um, okay. So you can do uh, this for practice. So identify three utility combinations for this consumer. If they have one hundred and ten dollars to spend, and good Y is ten dollars, and good X is twenty dollars, how many of each should they buy? Okay. And so you're going to draw a uh, budget constraint right on this. Okay. And if the consumer develops an allergy to good X how would that change their indifference curve, right? So they're no longer enjoying this as much, okay? 